Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today, uh, this video is about lowering your debt and some money saving tips. So I have 13 ideas for both kind of work together. The first one, there no particular order, but the first one is reduce your credit card debt if you have any credit debt. Um, and what I did when I was trying to pay off all my credit debt is I started with the smallest debt that I owed and paid them as much as I could above their minimum monthly payment. Everything else I paid just their minimum monthly payment. And then when that first one was paid off, I went on to the next one that I owed the least amount to, so on and so forth until everything was paid off. And once you get one debt paid off, then you have that much more money that you can put on to your next debt. So that's one way, they call it the snowball effect. And that's what I did to reduce my credit card debt. Next is if you are a homeowner, maybe look into refinancing your home. Now this doesn't go for a lot of people probably because the interest rates on home loans right now is really, really super high. So, but this is just a suggestion. What I did before we refinanced our house a few times when we first got it is I started paying attention to um, the cost of homes in my area to see if the home prices were going up or down. And then I was also paying attention to the interest rates on home loans. And when the interest rates started dropping to where they were about what or they were about lower than what I was paying. Then I started watching the um, price of houses in my area to see that maybe they were dropping. And then we looked into refinancing and we were able to get a little bit better interest rate. And we did that a couple times before we're now at a comfortable interest rate. And for my situation, this refinancing your home would, in, would not be an option for us right now because our interest rate is way below what the home loans are today. But if you're a new homeowner, say you've only been in your house for a couple of years, then maybe the interest rates right now might be a little bit lower than what you're paying. So it might be a good idea to check into it, to research that, to see what the interest rates are and the home prices in your area, to get a good idea of if it would be a good time for you or not to look into refinancing your home. So that's just a suggestion, but everybody's situation is different. So um, just a suggestion, but it, it might it might be something that you could do. Um, next is build a credit with your utility companies. Now I made a video a week or so ago about that where this time of year when when you're not using a lot of utilities for um, electricity or gas to, for heat, um, I suggested to continue paying a lot of money to them like you would in the winter time. So when the, the fall and winter gets here, you'll have some credit built up. Now I know that uh, a lot of utility companies have a program like that, that you just pay the same amount every month, no matter what your bill is to stay on a plan like that. But, um, which is a good thing, but the way I look at it is the pros and cons of that would be the pros is you're paying the same amount every month so you can easily budget that into your finances. But the cons would be if something drastic happens and somebody loses their job or something like that and you just flat out cannot pay anything this month um, with their payment plan, you're still going to be obligated to pay that monthly payment that you agreed to pay. And if you don't set up a payment plan with them and you just kind of figure it out on your own and willingly give that money up to them, then if you have a credit and something happens and somebody loses their job and you just don't have the money to pay your bill that month, it will be okay to skip paying them money that month if you have a credit with them without being in trouble or late fees or anything like that. So that's why I do it the way I do it, just in case. Either way works, um, however it's gonna work for your situation, but that's the reason why I do it myself without signing up for any payment plan with utility companies. Because I, uh, if something bad should happen, 
I don't want to be obligated to pay, even if it was $50 a month. If I don't have $50, but I have a credit of 200, I don't want to be in trouble for not giving them that money that I promised that I would. So that's why I do it the way I do it. Anyway, um, number four is try to get your, get your budget down to only necessary debts. For example, your mortgage or rent, if you are a renter, uh, utilities, uh, transportation, like um, car insurance, gas for your car, uh, maintenance for your car, at least keep up on oil changes and stuff like that to prevent any um, future expensive car repairs to come up. Or if you don't have a vehicle and you're using public transportation, maybe look into um, a monthly pass that might save you some money instead of paying per trip if you're not already doing that. So, and, and then um, food and non-food uh, necessities. Um, make sure that you have the necessities of food and some canned goods stocked up. And then the non-food items that you would use every day, maybe a um, basic... Uh, first aid stuff like maybe some painkillers, ibuprofen or something like that, or some band-aids and, you know, just little things like that, just in case. Number five is eat healthier and exercise to keep the doctor away. Um, I'm one to talk because I try to eat healthy, but there's a lot of crap that I eat that I shouldn't be eating and I should be exercising more than what I do. But... Those two things I know would be a good idea for me to do. And so I'm passing it on to you guys for an example, because if you're not eating healthy and you end up run down, then you end up sick and then you end up having to see a doctor and then there's more bills that um, might might have been unnecessary to have to pay. So taking care of yourself and eating healthier is a good idea. And um, to save money, don't eat out or you know, restaurants or, or fast food places, cook at home. Cooking at home is cheaper and it's more healthier. You have an option of what goes in and out of your food. Uh, and then pack your lunch to go to work or school. Um, prepare meals ahead of time. Uh, what I do, it's just the two of us, but on my weekends off, I do make casseroles and crock pot dishes and stuff like that. And when I'm putting the leftovers away, I do prepare single servings in freezer containers, label them with uh, masking tape and a Sharpie, and I freeze them. And then there's our work lunches. So I don't have to stress too much about what I'm going to do on a daily basis for work lunches. I'm not eating a bunch of um, pre prepackaged stuff. I used to buy the Marie calendars and all that kind of stuff, and I don't anymore. I just do it myself, and it saves a bunch of money. And then I'm not eating all this stuff that I shouldn't be eating. Um, let's see, where am I at? Number seven, shop sales and reduced racks and choose your stores wisely. Um, Dollar Tree is a good place to go depending on what you're going there for. For example, they do have some food items. They have canned goods, but because it's a Dollar Tree and they've raised their prices, everything is $1.25. So if you're looking at, say, a can of green beans, you know it's going to be $1.25 when maybe your local grocery store might have it for $0.89 cents or even $0.99. Cents. It's going to be less money than the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has bottled beverages, um, Powerade. Uh, they do have some sodas and stuff, but again, it's $1.25. And where I'm at, I can go into Winco and buy those things for 88 cents, 68 cents. So Dollar Tree, depending on what you're going there for, you might end up spending more money if you rely on Dollar Tree for too many things. The Dollar Tree uh, where that I go to, in fact, there's three Dollar Trees by my house. They have bread deliveries and uh, so a loaf of bread or English muffins and bagels are a dollar 25 a package and this is like oro wheat brand Sara lee uh thomas english muffins and stuff so i go to dollar tree for those items because a dollar 25 versus five dollars at the grocery store no matter what grocery store i go to i'm gonna get a better deal at the dollar tree so you can get some good deals but you got to pay attention to that and also in the grocery store i go to that um, isn't Dollar Tree. One of them is Safeway. 
they do have a reduced rack of 50% off. A lot of stuff that goes there is their dented cans. Um, they, they, the other day they had packages of toilet paper that was ripped, the plastic was ripped, probably on the outside of the pallet and it got damaged. So they put it up there for 50% off. So instead of paying $20, you could get it for 10 and there was like 24 rolls. So that's good things to look at. And let's see, what else do I have on the second page? Number eight is uh, look into more homemade items. Like I put a video up for homemade dish soap. I have a video for homemade laundry soap using Dawn, which ends up also being a, an all-purpose cleaner, but just not my videos. There's several videos out there that make not only just the, the homemade soaps and stuff, but they have all kinds of home. They got they got weed killer, they got pest control, they got all kinds of stuff that we could do ourselves without paying all the extra money at the garden store or wherever you can purchase these things and uh, save yourself some money that way. Um, I posted a video on homemade dishcloths that I use to wash my dishes out of 100% cotton yarn. I like those better than sponges and they're machine washable and it saves money. So a lot homemade stuff like that is really good. Uh, if you, if you don't have the skills, then, you know, look it up. YouTube has like an, an endless variety of things to uh, learn how to do yourself instead of going to the grocery store or relying on some kind of a service to do things for you. So, um, Number nine is challenge yourself with uh, money saving ideas. Like I have some channels also, uh, or so, sorry, not some, some channels, some videos uh, on some money saving challenges. There's the penny challenge and then there's also the Tuesday challenge. Um, I'm doing those two, but there are a lot of other money saving challenges that you can do. Um, as well, if you don't want to follow the two that I am doing there and I make mine fun. I use different colored pens and I try to make it fun. So I want to continue going back to it and contributing every week or however often is going to be easier for you to do. And you'll be amazed at how quickly the money adds up. And in fact, I'm going to be doing a video to update on where I'm at right now with my money saving challenges that I'm doing. So that's a good one. And you can try different ones like I just explained. Um, you can get your kids involved. You can get your family involved. You can put a jar out in the living room where everybody can, can uh, excuse me, I can't talk today, where everyone can contribute, you know, empty their pockets out or if, or if they find a quarter in the car or something, you know, bring it in and throw it in the jar. It's amazing at how quickly stuff like that adds up. Um, do some entertainment at home instead of paying money to go out. Movies are expensive, everything's expensive, but um, there's all kinds of things that you can do at home. You can have, and it's that kind of weather too, where it's outdoorsy type stuff. It's, it's barbecue season. A lot of people like to barbecue and get together, um, have like a potluck type get together uh, where everyone shows up and everybody brings something. And so by the time everybody gets there, you've got a big feast. Uh, enough to feed everyone and it doesn't cost just one person a bunch of money. It doesn't cost everybody a bunch of money. Everybody just pitches in. So there's the potluck where you get together and do that. There's game night where you can just do it as a family or you can have neighbors or friends. People come over and do game nights, movie nights. Um, you go to the park for a picnic. You can go hiking. Um, you can go to the lake for a picnic. Um, stuff like that. And what I came up with is also, I like to do jigsaw puzzles. Maybe if you like to do jigsaw puzzles, maybe you could do some sort of a jigsaw puzzle exchange where everybody gets together, pick a house, everybody goes to that house, they bring one puzzle, and then they just trade off the jigsaw puzzles and you go home, you do the puzzle, and then you go back next week, or maybe it's once a month, however often, and you can trade puzzles back and forth with each other. Or maybe it doesn't have to be puzzles. Maybe it could be something else that you like to do that would save money and entertain you and get everyone involved. Um, 
Number 11 is no pay TV, no Hulu, no Netflix, no cable. Um, I don't have any of those things anymore. I ditched uh, my cable service back in December and I don't miss it at all. I have YouTube. I don't have YouTube TV because that costs money. I just have YouTube and I have the internet. So because of the internet, I can watch YouTube for free and um, I don't miss cable TV at all. Um, number 12 is combined trips to save money. Um, to, today's Tuesday and it's actually my errand day. So I try to do everything on Tuesday where I have to leave the house and go somewhere and I just kind of have my route. So I'm not coming home and then tomorrow leaving again and going somewhere else, so on and so forth, because that spends money and gas. And when you keep coming and going like that, since you're out, maybe you're, you tend to want to go ahead and stop here on your way home or stop there on your way out. And you're spending more money that you wouldn't normally spend. So pick one day that's going to work for you and try to consolidate all of your trips into one day. It doesn't always work for me to do that in my situation because I may have a doctor's appointment one day and it's just going to be an all day thing. So I'm not going to have time to do anything else. So there are exceptions that I end up having to make, but for the most part, I don't really go anywhere, anywhere besides work, unless it's Tuesday. And number 13, grow your own food. I have a little garden and I think I've mentioned before that sometimes my garden turns out good. Sometimes it's not so great, but every year I keep trying. It's fun. It's an experiment. And if nothing else, I always end up with tomatoes <laughs> and I like tomatoes. So it works for me. Anyways, those are my 13 ideas to save money and to consolidate your debt. And um, I hope I helped you out and I hope to see you again back here on my channel at Survive With What You Know. Have a good day. Bye.